Hello. In this video, we're going to derive a conservation equation for the flow of multiple fluids in a porous medium. We're going to do it simply, we're going to do it in one dimension, but I'm going to go through the derivation really carefully because I think it's important that you understand how we derive conservation equations. They're not just equations on the first page of a textbook, you know, they're there and then you use them. They're equations that you really need to understand and need to understand thoroughly so you can apply the same concepts to different situations. So because I need to, to write something down, we'll go uh, straight to the whiteboard to do this. Okay, so the way in which I'm going to derive a conservation equation is I'm going to consider flow in one direction, that's not a very uh, good straight line. That's going to be the x direction. And what I'm going to consider is I'm going to consider some location x, and I'm going to consider a location close by. So it's going to be x plus delta x. And of course, um, we're going to take the limit that delta x goes to zero, but let's take it in step, shall we? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a box. So you can imagine this physically as a box. Okay. And it is in three dimensions, so my drawing is quite poor here, but um, you, can, you can do better yourself. Okay, so that's trying to give us a, a sort of three-dimensional perspective. So we have a, we have a three-dimensional box here. And imagine that's a piece of a porous medium and we have fluid flow fluid flow into and out of this box so this box has a cross-sectional area a it has a length that is delta x by definition okay and then we're going to um we're going to consider that we have a porous medium so it will have a porosity phi and it's a multi-phase flow. So we're going to consider the flow of both oil, water, and gas potentially. So inside the gas, there will be, sorry, inside the porous medium, there will be some water saturation, SW. Okay. So we know Darcy's law. We will assume that there is a Darcy velocity of water that goes in to this box. And we have some Darcy velocity of water that comes out. And that's given by the symbol Q. Why is it a symbol Q, not a V for velocity? Because it's not a real velocity. It is the volume of water that's flowing per unit area, per unit time. Now, the way in which you uh, derive conservation equations is not to get sort of stressed out about cal calculus, but just to do it really simply step by step. So imagine we're at a time t and I want to know what the mass of water in the box. Right? Fairly simple um, question to ask. We've got this box, how much water is in the box? And you might say well uh, there's like the size of the box. Okay well it's got an area a got a length delta x, that's the volume of the box. But then of course, it's a porous medium, right? The water is only contained in a fraction of the pore space and that's my fraction, that's my porosity. Fine. But then I also have a saturation, SW, I'm talking about multi-phase flow. So I'm going to allow there both to be, as I said, oil, water and gas in principle inside the porous medium. So SW, Okay, gives me the fraction of the pore space that's water. So this is a volume, this is a pore volume, this is a water volume. I've actually written mass, haven't I? Not, uh, not, not, not volume, because um, strictly speaking, mass is conserved. Fluids can compress and expand, and we've been talking about that earlier, so it's really mass that's going to be strictly conserved. So we're going to multiply, obviously, by the density. And this saturation is evaluated at time t, okay? Because time t, what's the mass of water in the box? Now, 
fluid is flowing, things are going to change. Imagine I'm injecting water here, okay, and there's no water flow here. So imagine we start off with a reservoir that's full of oil and the only thing that flows is oil, and then we start injecting water. So the saturation of water will be a function of distance and time. So as we're building up this conservation equation, we begin to think, you know, what, what is actually we're looking at? We're looking at a piece of rock, there's gonna be water and oil there, we're doing something on the injected water, um, the water saturation will change, and it will change as a function of distance and time. This is why we're getting partial differential equations. We're going to have two variables, distance and time, to deal with. So at some time later, which haha, we'll call t plus delta t, and yes, we're going to make delta t zero, what is the mass in the box? Well, uh, isn't it just the same? And the answer is yes, nothing mysterious happens, except now we're going to leave a little bit more of a gap because this is at t plus delta t. Now, I'm going to make an approximation straight away that the density actually is not going to change actually on either space or time. So in fact, I'm going to look at fluids um, that have negligible compressibility and actually is reasonable for water. Um, in principle, this would be rho at t plus delta t if it were uh, something that was changing. So in general, I can make rho change with time as well. Okay, so um, that all looks straightforward. So um, we can write a change in mass. Okay, so from time t plus delta t to time delta t is a delta x i rho w and then sw at t plus delta t minus sw at time t. Okay, that's fine. Now, what I want to do, I'm going to move me here, um, maybe somewhere here. Okay, so that's great, um, but why is there a change in mass? There's a change in mass because there's flow into the box and there's flow out of the box. And if there's a change, it's because the flow in is not the same as the flow out. So what we have to do is the mass that enters the box box in a time delta t. So we're considering a time delta t, how much goes into the box in that time, delta t. Well, there's Q, isn't there? Well, it's QW in. Now, QW in is QW evaluated at X. That's the inlet of the box. So it's QW of X. Now, at this point, think carefully what Q means. It's the volume of water flowing per unit area per unit time. So if I multiply it by an area, that's the volume per unit time. If I multiply it by a time, that's the volume of water that flows in in delta t. I multiply it by a row, and that's a mass. Okay? So that's what enters the box. Now, at this point, people do tend to sort of not be calm. You know, I mentioned partial differential equations, diff derivations, and sort of an air of panic begins to consume people often. And so you see this porosity term sitting there and you want to pick it up and put it in the equation. There is no porosity term in the flow. And the reason is the definition. It's the definition of Darcy velocity. It's the volume per unit area per unit time. There is no porosity. Ignore porosity. It doesn't matter. The porosity term hasn't been mysteriously ignored. It's here in the mass. Right? We want to know volume in the box. We need to know the porosity. But when we come to the flow, the Darcy velocity, Q, as defined by Darcy's law, we're comfortable with that, does not have a porosity term, so don't stuff it in. Okay, so what's the mass that leaves? Is QW out, which is QW at location X, or delta X. And we got the same. And again, I could in principle have my density a function of both distance and time, 
because the, the, the pressures could be checked, will be changing, right? We're moving in response to a pressure gradient. Pressures may be changing, the density will change as a function of pressure. So they, they, I'm doing a specific case, but don't over specify. I think that if I were to allow um, density to change, somehow the derivation would be in some mysterious and complex ways completely different, right? We're just, just, just keeping it simple. So the change in mass, right? So we, we've got two changes in mass, right? So the change in mass. is now just get the signs it's what goes in minus what goes out okay so it's a delta t rho w and then it's going to be multiplied by i want to give myself room for this because it's in minus out so it's qw of x minus qw of x plus delta x. It's not um, the other way around. So you got to, otherwise you get the signs wrong. Okay, so I've got the change of mass in the box in a time delta t, and I got the mass in and the mass out. So conservation, when we talk about conservation, again, it, it, if you're um, straightforward about it, it's, it's perfectly simple. There is a change of mass, there's a change of mass, mass is conserved, so they're equal. So Invoking a conservation equation, invoking conservation of mass, is simply where what I do, okay, is I take this bit and I make it equal to this bit. So that's that's a conservation equation. It's actually as simple as that. That is, I've done, I've derived a conservation equation. Okay. Now that um, obviously doesn't look very satisfactory. Um, I want to. Um, do something a little bit better than that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, rearrange this and then turn it into a partial differential equation by taking the limits of the delta x and delta t go to zero. So what I think is um, easiest now is if actually I clear everything. We'll actually even get rid of the uh, box because we're not necessarily using it. Okay. So let's just rewrite what we had before. We had the change in mass um, in the box itself, which was an A delta X by rho W. And then we had SW of T plus delta T minus SW of T. So this is just rewriting what we had before, but it's, it's useful just so that you can go through it and think about it. Okay, and then we had the, the mass that was flowing in and out. And we had an A delta T term, a rho W term. And then it was in minus out. So it's actually QW of X minus QW of X plus delta X. Okay, so let's, let's look at that equation. Um, you can immediately see now, there are gonna be some terms that cancel. The A's always cancel. Okay, sometimes people like writing conservation equations with an A in it because they feel it's a bit more explicit. They're actually looking at real volumes rather than this um, volume per unit area. Um, but actually it's more elegant just to, 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 to remove the A because it's, it's a sort of a dummy in the equations. Um, in our particular case, because I'm going to assume that the fluid densities do not change much, so we're looking at a case, for instance, say, where I'm doing water flooding in an oil reservoir, and I'm trying to maintain the overall pressures much the same. So the changes in pressures and densities as a consequence would be quite small. So I can eliminate that, but that's not, it's not essential. I, I left it in, you just follow the same steps, and you get an equation that has density. Okay, so that's, that's fine. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start being a bit calculus-like, I'm gonna put the delta T down here. So this is delta T. And I'm gonna put the delta X down here. So there's a delta X here. Okay. Um, and then what I'm gonna do, because this, this doesn't look quite right, it looks the wrong way around. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it all over this side of the equation and then it's all going to equal zero. So this uh, hopefully isn't uh, too complex algebraically. I'm sorry, we... Uh, do this. We don't have to do this in red. Particularly special. Right, so we've got 
SW of T plus delta T minus SW T over delta T plus, I'm going to have to move me out of the way. Okay, plus um, right now I've got the this the other way around, so hopefully we're looking we're looking in good shape. Delta X and that equals zero. And then I'm going to take the limit of delta T delta X to zero. So I have a partial differential equation. So what do we have here? We've got here a change in saturation divided by delta T, uh, T plus delta T minus T over delta T. So that's DSW by DT. And this is going to be DQW by DX. Okay, this is a fundamental theorem. For this. And the other thing I've noticed here, um, if I'm assuming incompressible fluids uh, with no appreciable pressure drop, obviously the porosity is also constant. And again, in principle, we can have a rock um, that is actually compressing as I vary the pressure. Again, I'm going to ignore that. Okay, so we're, doing, we're, we're making assumptions as we go along and I'm not formally writing them down because I want to get the idea of how you just progress in these steps. And I'm deliberately doing it slowly. So it is strictly speaking, we're looking at incompressible two-phase flow in one di dimension. So we take the limit and we get the equation that we wanted to derive, which is phi dsw by t plus d w by dx equals zero. And that is the equation for today. That is what we wanted to derive. Okay. And I've only derived it in uh, one dimension because in one dimension is when we're able to um, solve it analytically. So subsequent videos will go through the analytic uh, solution of this equation. If you do want to consider three-dimensional flow, um, you can do the same with a box, but now you have flow in the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction. So you can imagine you've got a dq dx plus dq dy plus dq dz. Um, if you're a little bit more elegant, um, you can use Green's theorem, um, and you can actually look at any arbitrary um, arbitrary volume and the and the flux across the surface. I'm actually not going to to do that. Right? What I will do is I'll simply write down the three dimensional version of this equation. And I do this at the top. So this isn't uh, okay. So I'm going to just do this at the top in 3D. Okay, so this is a 1D, this is 1D incompressible. Right, so one dimensional. Okay, and it's incompressible because I've assumed that phi and rho w are constant. Okay, in 3D, the same equation, you've still got the phi dsw by dt. And then here you have a dqx, sorry, dqw in the x direction by dx plus d by dy plus d by z. And so this is div dot q w, which is a vector in three dimensions. And this is the divergence of that vector. And that equals zero, and so that will be that will be my three-dimensional version of this equation. In which, so those are those are the um, those are the, the those are the two equations. So that's uh, all I wanted to show so far. Very simple, but actually, when you start looking at different circumstances, it's surprising how easy you can get muddled with this. So it's Conservation equation, just flow in and out of a box, you just have to account for the mass. What's the mass in the box? What goes in, what goes out? You know, the analogy is a bit like your bank account, okay? You look at your account at the end of the month, you look at the beginning, there's been a change, that must be equal to what you've earned minus what you've spent, okay? And as long as you keep track of it, um, everything's under control. So what we're going to do later is we've derived this, these equations now. What we're going to do is we're going to, to solve those uh, analytically, which in, in itself um, takes a bit of work, um, but is really very revealing when, when you want to understand uh, multiphase flow and, of course, media. So I'll end there. Thank you very much.